Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today is time again for DAX Fridays and uh, we are going to continue with the time intelligence uh, functions. In this case we will uh, go through date add. Okay, so let's begin. So for this video tutorial uh, we are going to use um, the file that I used for explaining year to date, quarter to date, and month to date. And uh, this is the North Wind database or data set that has a calendar or date. Um, it has data up to 1998, uh, 6th of May. Okay. So if we go here, here's the calendar. We have the date column is the column with continuous uh, dates, right? So it's not missing one. And that is important if we want to use time intelligence functions. And the last day available for this data set is 98, 6th of May. So date add, let's go and see what Microsoft says uh, date add function does. Here we have it, and Microsoft tells us that it returns a table that contains a column of dates, so it's going to give us dates, that is shifter, shifted either forward or backward in time. And the number of intervals, so here we have the column with the dates, and then the number of intervals will say if we go forward or backward so you can write if you write for example one it will go one day forward if you write minus one it will go minus one backward and the interval is says how big the interval should be so for example go one day backwards or one month backwards one quarter or one year okay so let's go to to Power BI again, and uh, well, in this case, we're not going to use Power BI, we're going to use DAX Studio uh, because it allows us to see exactly what the uh, date add function is doing. So, I'm going to show you if you haven't used DAX Studio before, don't worry, I'm going to publish a link on the description box. It's a free download, so just go there and download it, and then you can just follow along. So here we are in DAX Studio. Uh, I have my year to date uh, file open and the DAX Studio sees that and say, okay, would you like to open that as a data source? And that's the thing that we want to do. So we click connect and to start evaluating functions, you have to write evaluate first, okay? Then we're going to write, of course, date add. And now we're going to take, if you remember, we need a column of dates, continuous dates. So that's what we're going to write here. So deem date, that is our continuous date column. And we want to go back one day to run this query. You just press S F five. And you see the results here. So let's go and see what it did. If we go to this data set, the last date is 6th of May, okay? So what this is giving us is a set of dates that where the last date is one day backward. So is giving us the 5th of May, 1998. Cool, right? Now, what happens if I write month? What do you think? it will give us for results. Pause the video, think about it, and then come back and I'll show you what it does. Okay, let's press F5. And of course, it starts with the previous month. So the current month is May, and it's giving us dates from April and backwards. Okay. If we write quarter it will be the same and it will write year it will do 
pause if you don't know anything about it. Otherwise, I press F5 and it will give us the dates of May from the previous year. For our data set, we have until 6th of May. This ignores that and it gives you the entire May because last year you, ha you have that data for the entire month. So it's giving you everything. Make sure you understand this, okay? So why is this useful? Well, let's go back to our year to date file. If you remember how we calculated this, we use the function total year to date and then we use dates year to date function to do the entire year to date calculation. Let's go back to DAX and see what dates year to day do. So we open a new query. We write evaluate. And now here we write dates year to date. And then we have our date column, right? So now I'm going to press F5 so you see what this function returns. We start from the end. This is the 6th of May 1998. This is the last date of our table and it goes all the way up to the 1st of January of that year. That's exactly what we want, right? Because we're calculating year to date. Now, what happens if we want to calculate previous year, year to date? So now we can combine these two. Look at this. If we go and do a new one, we write evaluate. We write date add and then date year to date. Here we are going to write our calendar column. We close that. So this function, dates year to date, is going to give us that, right? From the 1st of January to the last date in our calendar, which is the 6th of May. So we have that in there. And then we say, okay, go back one year. What dates do you think we will get? Pause the video or just continue along if you know press F5 and it will give us from the 1st of January 1997 to May 1997. Now again this is giving us entire month because entire month exists on the previous year. But with these you can calculate year sales for the previous year or whatever measure you're trying to do. You can calculate things that happened a year before. Easy, right? So that's an example of what you can actually accomplish with date add. You can do a lot of things, but uh, this is probably the most straightforward example. I will do a video on previous year calculations uh, because there are a lot of ways to do it. But I just wanted to give you this example so you can better understand the power of date add. So we have generated uh, dates backwards. Now we are going to generate dates forward and see what happens. So we continue. We do the same thing. We evaluate. We write date add like that date and we want to go i don't know uh, 35 days forward it's not days it's day f5 and let's see what it does and what do you see here it says 1998 may 6. we said we wanted to go 35 days after that date. Well, you cannot do that. Let me show you. We go back to the documentation and uh, here. The result table includes only dates that exist in the dates column. Okay, so our date column contains date up to 1998, 6th of May. 
And what date add does not do is generate new dates. It can just run between the dates you already have. So if instead of having deemed date here, we just had, let's say in a column, the 9th of February, then it would be able to give us the date 35 days after. But you cannot take the last day and ask date add to generate future dates because it just can't. So it's important that you understand that too. Great. Okay, so this is it. Uh, if you like it, uh, please let me know if you like the video. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, uh, you let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And uh, subscribe, I publish uh, Power BI videos and DAX videos every week. So have a great evening. Bye.